Can you, for the people who don't really know what PR is or what it entails, can you explain a little bit of, of that? So I like to compare advertising, branding, marketing, and PR. They're all related. Uh, advertising is paid media. So you control 100% of the message. You control where it is, what placement you have, how big your logo is. You control everything. Marketing is kind of like everything you do that has your logo on it or your brand or your perception. It's kind of all encompassing. PR is earned media. You may be on TV, you may be on the radio, but you're not paid for that coverage. It's harder to get because to do that, you have to be you have to be doing some kind of public announcement that's educational, non-promotional. You have to kind of have that balance of non-promotional. Um, mm -hmm. But it's it's perception of your company and in, in, in changing that perception in, in your market. So PR can be anything from your messaging to client or to potential clients on social media. It could be a video that you post. It could be responses to reviews online. It can be a lot of different things, but ultimately it's going to lead to earned media coverage and those TV reporters or newspaper reporters seeking you out for comment. Mm -hmm. And then branding is all of those things together and, and you know, who your brand is in your market. So they, they kind of all go together, but PR is a very specialized niche. What do you think about PR? Like it looks like a PR article, but it's actually a paid ad. Yeah. Our clients do get those opportunities for advertorials and they can work. I think it depends on the type of media outlet that you uh, are, are working with. And we're seeing a lot more of that because as you know, the media world is shrinking. People are paying for news less because they can find it easily online. So we're seeing that when we evaluate those opportunities, but they're not the same. It almost devalues the, the article, in my opinion, if you, oh, if yeah. you figure out that this is a paid article versus a, you know, an edited article that someone came up with because someone did some amazing work and all of a sudden you're like, okay, that's now I feel bad. Like I, almost like I was taken advantage of like, all right, this whole publication is completely useless to me now because it's nothing but a sponsorship ads being paid it is it is less valuable and less credible for sure well and you can blame marketing agencies for <laughs> demeaning ruin all everything. Of, because honestly there's companies out there literally in their like you know you'd see it on their website their package right press release every month and i'm like yeah really every month now i have you're to gonna have something, something you're gonna month. you're gonna have something worthy every month that isn't just stuffed with a bunch of keywords so you can try to rank a little higher on the search engines but i how can, do you I have a, how, heather how do you come up with pr because like for me thinking about things that i could create a, uh, a press release from i can't think of things like that every month but i know that so i have some friends who are in the in the pr world and that's exactly what I told her. And I was like, there's no way I could come up with that kind of stuff. And she's like, well, what about this? What about this? What about this? I was like, oh, I didn't think about any of that stuff. So, yeah. yeah. You really have to look at it a little bit differently. So one thing that we always try to do is we try to be a, a source for the media, meaning we have to consider what the media wants. Newspapers want to sell ads, sell newspapers. TV reporters need to sell commercials, so they need viewers. So you have to try to put on their hat when you're thinking of a story that's going to be of interest to them. Mm -hmm. Short answer is we don't have a shortage of ideas. We've been doing this, you know, so long that we know, hey, it's March, and this is an HVAC company. We need to talk about the importance of spring tune-ups, spring maintenance. Those things kind of happen and they're they're not really evergreen stories but they're seasonal stories and they can be a good story for media if you tell it in the right way other clients we have partner with charitable organizations and so we know that those things need mm. to be announced but they need to be announced in a non-self-serving kind of way that's so the problem that i run into because it's like i don't want to pat on my back 
And that's what yeah. it feels like. But it, there's a lot of times like we did, like Leukemia Lymphoma Society, we're big proponents in that, and the Georgia Police Canine Foundation, and, and all these things that we spend a lot of money and time and effort on. But it feels like, okay, we want to do that because we want to do that, not because we want a pat on the back. And so then whenever you talk to someone, they're like, well, why didn't you highlight that you did X, Y, and Z? And it's like, oh, I kind of feel dirty if I do that. Like, that's yeah. not why I did this. Yeah, so think about it this way. So if you have a company and you're called ABC Home Service and you issue a press release that says ABC Home Service donates $2,000 to Georgia Canine Association. Uh-huh. uh huh but if you say Georgia Canine Association receives $2,000 from ABC Home Service, then it's a little bit more interesting. But the reason we do it is kind of twofold. It's going to help you recruit because people want to work for a company giving back. They want to feel good about the company. But also you're inspiring other companies out there or other people to donate to that organization who probably can't afford a PR agency on their own and doesn't have the awareness maybe to to get the donations that they need to to do good work. So Oh yeah. It's it's not self-serving if you can do it in the right way.